Um, hey, Billy Boy, first time, long time. I got to, I'm going to get right into it. All right. Last weekend, I got a text from a former fuck buddy who found out that I had slept with their friend before we started hooking up. Oh, you know what? Go fuck yourself. All right. You're crushing ass all over the place. You don't need my advice. I probably need advice from you. That's only, that's a secret goal of, of a certain percentage of guys is like, what if I can fuck her and all of her friends before they all figure it out? You know what I mean? It's sort of like an action movie with your dick. And <laughs> can I stick it in all of them before the bomb goes off? And, uh, and can I get out of town like fucking De Niro and he, before I see all of them coming up with the how dare you. Haven't you ever fantasized about doing that and you were so good that as mad as they were, they all reminisced about how great you were and then all four of them come over and be like, ah, we're all fucky at the same time. If you haven't had that fantasy, God bless you because you're evidently a way more decent a human being than I am. So anyways, with that, here we go. Um, he goes, she sends me, anyway, let, let me just refresh your memory here. Last weekend, I got a text from a former fuck buddy who found out that I had slept with her friend before we started hooking up. She sends me a pretty heated two-page text about how much of a dog and douchebag I am for sleeping with her friend, then fucking her the same weekend. Yeah, dude, go, dude, you're a legend. You're a fucking legend. What is the, dude, all you can do is just stand there with your hand at your sides, take the slap to the face. And just know that, yeah, you're a hero. Dude, you banged her friend and and her in the same weekend? And you're, 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 you don't front a, rock, a successful band? I mean, that's, that's you know, I, my, hats off to you, sir. Hats off to you. Anyways, he goes, now in reality, I had slept with the friend in late May and then starting hook, hooking up with the fuck buddy in early September. Oh, okay, so she tried to make it more dramatic. That's still great, dude. You, you, you seamlessly made the shift over the summer. You're still a hero. Um, anyways, he goes, to go into a little more detail, the fuck buddy had gone on several dates and fucked once three... Oh, I had gone on several dates with her and fucked once three years prior when we were both at college. But then shortly after, she lost interest and we remained as friends for the next few years. When I say friends, I mean the occasional text and seeing each other maybe three or four times. All right, so what is your fucking problem? What is the rule? Shouldn't the, shouldn't the second one be mad at you? Because you fucked the other one first. I don't, I'll never understand. I'll never understand. What, can any female, if you're still listening at this point, if I have any female listeners at this point, can you explain to me why that makes you mad? You know, because, I don't know, there was always like, there was always that girl that, like, you know, when I was growing up, like, I can't say me because I wasn't getting anything. I didn't get anything in high school. Big fucking goose egg. I would, my, my pussy getting career in high school, I was like the first year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers came in the league and went winless. <laughs> what was the name of their Gary Huff? Was that the name of their quarterback? I was the Gary Huff of, of pussy in, in, in high school. Whatever the hell. I can't even remember the name. His last name was Huff. was the name of their quarterback with cream sickle fucking uniform. I might as well have had a suit made out of that when I was in high school. Um, I, but anyways, there, there, were, there were those girls that like my drinking buddy crew, like three or four of them out of the five had all hooked up with her. And none of them were none of Nobody was mad. Everybody high five. That's fucking great. That's, you know, we thought it was a great thing. I don't understand why they get so mad. You know what it is? Is I, I just think that they want to, uh, it's a big thing with them that it, that it has to be difficult. And, you know, and if, if they, I think they just feel like if you bang them and their friend, they just somehow feel like, maybe it makes them feel cheaper. That there's just, you're just fucking hitting... It's like you're a machine gun. You're just mowing them down. I think that they really want to believe that they're the only one in that area code. You know? That they're like, uh, that it's like gold rather than like pine cones. <laughs> <laughs> you got to dig for it. It's a precious metal. They don't, they, they don't want to feel like they're just like litter in the gutter. Maybe that's what, I have no, I have no idea. But I have learned something in this. Fuck buddy is two words. 
This guy put fuck buddy together. Um, that's how much he's into sex right now. He's, got, he's, he's literally like the fuck is, is got the buddy part bent over. And it's all one word. They are one. Um, so anyways, he said to go into a little more detail. I already read that part. He said, so fast forward three years and the friend of hers, that's the future fuck buddy, said that we should hang out after the Sox game. All right, I'm getting lost in this with all my rambling. No, what the fuck? So you hooked up with a former fuck buddy. So now, okay, so this is when, when, when number two comes in before you went back to number one. All right, so fast forward three years later. Yeah, so she didn't give a fuck. So who she should be mad at is the second one. No, but it's been three years. You know, I really don't think anybody has a right to be mad here. All right, whatever. We should hang out after a Sox game. Of course, I see this as a green light, because whenever a girl that you really don't know says we should hang out is codes for I'm down to fuck. Exactly. Did you hear that uh, guy with the fucking bassoon? You got, they, they speak in code. We should hang out sometime. That, that's literally, that's what that means. If they say, would you ever think of taking me out? That means they want a relationship. We should hang out sometime. That's what that means. Okay? And I'm not saying 100%. I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's looking good. You're getting waved around by the third base coach. Um, anyways, where the hell am I? Oh, for fuck's sakes. I, I apologize, guys. When a girl says that, you're down to fuck. So, oh, so anyway, so we end up fucking, and she gets on a plane the next day to study abroad in Europe for the summer. Exactly. She wanted some shoving off dick, you know? Let me get a little last piece of America before I go over to Europe. Tremendous. Anyways, fast forward three months later, and the fuck buddy, all one word, says that I should come over some weekend to hang out. Green light. We bang, it's great, and we continue to do it until the end of the month when I fly back to the place that I now live. So a few days ago, I get the heated text saying I'm a dog, I'm a douchebag, and she thought I was a friend, etc. I say that there's nothing I can do or say to change what happened, and the only thing that I can say is I'm sorry if I hurt her and that I am an asshole. But my question to you uh, Mr. No Relationship Psychology Degree Comedian, is am I a dog for what I did? No. You're not. You're not. And fuck these women who call you up and use you like a fuck stick. All right? They called you up because they wanted some dick, and you gave it to them. All right? You gave them what the fuck they asked for, and then she's going to turn around and get mad at you? And then you apologize and say, yeah, I'm an asshole. You're not an asshole. But you know something? I don't think you think you're an asshole because you're out there crushing it. You're just fucking saying what you know this girl wants to hear because probably six months from now she's going to fuck you again. Right? You're not an asshole. You didn't hit on the other girl. She said, hey, we should hang out sometime. Okay? She's giving you the green light. You know what I mean? You're a guy. You have to take that. You got to take it. Women don't understand that because they can get laid every night of the fucking week if they want to. They don't have to have any game. And they, it, for us, it's, it's, it's work. It's a skill. Okay? So when somebody, when it's, it's like you're in the wild. You got a free fucking meal. You're going to take it. You know? I learned that in Australia when I was looking at those poisonous snakes. And they're like, why does that thing have enough venom to kill 200 mice? Why does it need that much venom? It's because it's out there in the fucking... The outback. And out in the outback, food is scarce. So if you get a shot at something, you got to fucking take it down. And that's what the hell you did. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fucking dog. You know, it's like, you know what? Fuck you, lady. I'm a dog? Then, then you're a whore. If I'm a dog, you're a fucking whore. Did I call you up? Did I come around sniffing up your skirt? No, you called me because you wanted some dick, and I gave it to you. How about a fucking thank you letter? Dude, you really should have come at her like that. You really should have. And I got to tell you something. On some fucked up level, she would actually respect you. As long as you didn't call, don't call her a whore. All right? But she fucked, she, so what, what is her relationship with you? You guys barely talk and like whenever she's in a, a dick dry spell, she fucking goes over to you like your Hertz rental car and just fucking just rides your dick. And then you're supposed to be exclusive and not bang her friend who's cut from the same cloth. Who wants to get plowed before she goes over to Europe? This is your fucking fault? You're the one who should feel used. You know? Neither one of them wants a meaningful relationship with you. Uh, you know what? This is what I say. Just don't even write them back. And you know something? Fuck them again. Just bang them again. Who you, you gives a fuck? Next time you see her, she wants to give you a dirty look. Just like... I, I don't even react to it. What, 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 a, what a fucking... 
What a bunch of bullshit. And I got, I can't believe that, like, you, we don't have a relationship. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing fucking over and over again. Like, why don't I, I'm, just, I'm stuttering here. You know, the other day I was watching, uh, I was watching the Texans when the Patriots played the Texans Monday Night Football, right? And uh, some lady at the, at the, at the, was watching with us and she started giving Bob Kraft shit. For having like a, a 35 year old girlfriend. And for those of you who don't watch football, Bob Kraft was married forever, had a family, and his uh, wife unfortunately uh, died of cancer. You know? So she dies of cancer. You know, he stuck by her side, did the whole damn thing, and then now he's got a new girlfriend. And she's 35. And women are mad. They're upset about it. They're upset by it. And I, I, don't, uh, I don't get it. You know, if I die of a disease, I, I, I don't want fucking Nia to be sitting here like some spinster. Go out and go have a good time. I'm dead. I don't give a fuck. You know, unless I'm a ghost and I'm sitting there watching it, then I wouldn't like it. <laughs> but I would just fly away. Why would I sit there watching it? You know, start haunting them every time they were going to have sex. I wouldn't do that to somebody. I just don't understand why, like, um, it's not like he went out and got with, like, a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old girl. She's 35. 35. At 35, if women aren't married, they're freaking out. Right? They, look, I, you know what I love? I just love that they get mad at the guy. And it's like, what about the girl? Why is she with them? Okay? If he's some sort of, like, you know, oh, he's just there because he wants a hot girlfriend, then what about her? She's just there for the money. So then it, it works out. Doesn't it? I don't know. Whenever like shit like that goes on, that really taps into the cynical part of me, which, you know, if you listen to this podcast, God knows it doesn't take much. But um, sometimes I just, I just think that it almost taps into that fuck buddy thing. They just don't want to know how easily that they could be replaced. Yet they want you to feel they don't give a fuck if they, if they try and make you feel that way. All those stupid songs, Beyonce, that, that to the left, to the left, you know? That whole song is like, yeah, just take your shit, get the fuck out of here, I'll have another guy in two seconds. You're, you're that easily replaced, you know? And they, they love those songs. Those songs, are they consider them fucking empowering. But then when they see a successful guy with a, you know, a nice closet full of shiny ties and his own sports team, when they see that he can still fucking pull down some 35-year-old ass, they get mad. They start judging his character. Even me and my mom, we had that discussion. Well, I just don't think that that's, I just, I'm sure that there was somebody in their 50s that he could have, who the fuck wants to get with a 50-year-old, even if you're 70? You know? I don't fuck, you know what I mean? You know, you're starting over again. If you got a fucking old car and you trade it in, you don't trade it in on a fucking another old car. You get a new one. You know? You fucking ride that thing into the ground and then you get another one. I don't know. I'm just saying I don't have a fucking problem with what the guy's doing. Anyways, wife's weird sex store purchase. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Wife's weird. Um, dear Bill, me and my wife have been married for two months, and she has been less involved and willing to have sex. All right. Right there. And she got a weird sex store purchase. I don't even need to read the rest of this. Sir, have it annulled. Um, anyways, he goes, I thought the honeymoon phase was just ending and started to adapt. It's been two weeks since we last had sex, and Friday, while taking out the garbage, I found a bag to the local sex shop. Okay, that's it. I don't need to read anymore. Just get it annulled. Go your separate way. I didn't know what she bought, and since we haven't been having sex, it was a puzzler. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Dude, it's this whole fucking thing. It's over. I then started snooping. Okay, that's it. While she was at work and found a dildo in the closet. I know women have them, but this one wasn't your usual dildo. Okay, that's it. Nothing to see here. Dude, this has more red flags than the than the fucking opening ceremony of China at the Olympics. 
Okay, it wasn't your usual dildo. Jumping back in. We're losing a lot of tiles. I think we're going to burn up here in fucking re-entry. Um, it was the shape of an animal's penis. All righty. See you later, that lady. It was a fun two months. I don't, I'm not even, you can keep everything. I'm just going to take my T-shirts and my shoes and a pair of pants. It was close to a foot long and weirdly shaped. Wait a minute. They don't make animal dildos. What, what does an animal penis even look like? I don't even... <laughs> I've seen an elephant fuck. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I've seen dogs bang. Anyways, it was close to a foot long and weirdly shaped. I have kept quiet, but I really want to confront her, but don't know how to do it without hurting her feelings or opening a crazy can of worms. Please help, Bill. All right, dude. You know, you, you need, you need, if you're not just going to walk, uh, you really need professional help on this one. All right. I mean, how, how, I don't know. What, what do you do? Do you take the thing out of the trash and then just leave it on the fucking coffee table? And then she walks in and just, you're just pacing. Hey, honey, how was your day? And you just fucking, what, what's this? I just found this in the fucking trash. Huh? Which orifice were you shoving this in? I mean, there's no fucking way to... How, how do you even bring that up? Listen, dude, I'm going to tell you this right now. Your wife has a huge dildo. No, your wife has a... <laughs> your wife has a huge skeleton. Something. There's something gigantic going on. Oh, God, I can't... Got to stop saying gigantic and huge. She's got a big secret. Bigger than that fucking giraffe dildo you found in the fucking garbage. Um... You're two months in, dude, and you're already not getting... Sex is already a fucking issue. All right? Now, it sounds like you really love this woman, the fact that you're actually still willing to work this out. But as an outsider, with no feelings, no, no heart, no broken heart on the line here, um, you know, I, I think you just got to walk. I can, no, you know what? I... I what would I say? I would just say, I'm literally sitting here right now, guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing my eyes. You know when you do that with one hand? You know that move? I'm doing that right now, trying to think of how to fucking, how would I bring this up? I would take the fucking hippo cock, <laughs> and I would, I would put it in one of those uh, big brown bags, if it can fit, from Macy's. Whatever you got to do. Maybe like one of those, you know when they plastic wrap like a Christmas tree? I would find one of those bags. And I'd stick it in that. And I would just say, honey, I need to talk to you about something. All right? And I would sit her down. Dude, fuck this and fuck her fucking feelings. All right. See, I had to get past the shock here. All right? Just sit her down and say, listen, I'm not judging you. I'm, I, I, you know, I just need some honesty here because this is a gigantic, huge fucking gorilla dick that I found in the trash. Okay? You haven't been having sex with me. What is going on? What is just, tell me what is going on. I'm not going to tell anybody about this other than this podcast. I'm not going to judge you. Just level with me. Do you, is this why you wanted to go to the zoo the other day? No. Just, you got to get it out there, dude. You got to get it out there and you have to hear her fucking story. And you have to be supportive both for her feelings and for you, for the fact that you deserve to know the fucking truth about this before you spend the rest of your life with somebody who's going to bang you once every two months while secretly wanting to fuck a tiger. Or what? A, a fucking grizzly bear. Dude, there's no, they don't make animal dildos. And I swear to God, you fucking assholes, if there is a website, don't send me the link because I'm not looking at it. I don't need that on my hard drive. I'm not looking at it. Dude, you have to sit her down. Okay, and, and you, you have to bring, you got to bring in that zebra dick. You, you just have, <laughs> you have to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. You owe it to yourself. All right, and as much as it's going to be embarrassing for her and everything, it's going to help her out. Because I bet that there's a part of her that she, she doesn't like herself. 
that she's sneaking around and starting to live this lie and all, or, or, or whatever the fuck is going on. I don't know. I would also bring it, maybe bring it to the sex store and ask somebody what this is before, like, you make a complete ass of yourself. Because God knows, what if it's something else? What if it's like a fucking, uh, you know, you know, like those wood things that's on an old staircase? Um, I don't fucking know. Uh, all right. On a banister. Uh, dear Bill. Um, Bill, I met you after a show in Pittsburgh. The black guy with the hot Latina. We laughed about my shoes matching my outfit. <laughs> Welp, my beautiful girlfriend for the past three years has a little bit of insecurity, insecurity issues. Um, a lot of those absolutely gorgeous women do. And you know why it is? It's because their level, I'm without even reading this shit, the reason why I think a lot of them are fucking insecure is because... Because they're beautiful. And that goes away after a while. So the clock is just fucking ticking. You know? If you were just some regular douchebag like me, there's no pressure going back to your fucking high school reunion. I mean, there's, the expectations are so fucking low. You know, it's easy to surpass them. Like, oh, geez, he didn't get fat. This guy's awesome. <laughs> but if you're a fucking hot chick, it can just, it can only go downhill. And I also think that they have the same insecurity a rich guy has, where a rich guy's like, this woman's just with me because of my money, not because of who I am. I think that they have the insecurity that this person's just with me because of my ass and titties. Hi. All right. For some re odd reason, she feels the need for me to prove to her that I love her whenever we're in a public setting. So recently, during some Christmas shopping, uh, she got upset that I wouldn't hold her hand as we walked through the mall. She proceeded to catch one of the one of her spicy Latin attitudes with me. Um, see, now, if you were white and you said that, and you said that on TV, you would have to apologize for nine weeks when you lose your job. Why does it have to be spicy? Are you saying that Latino people are like their peppers? Um, all right, I'm going to stop commenting and just plow through this. Okay, so I handle, handle uh, the situation like a G, parentheses, gentleman, and completely ignored her ass. Um... Until we got into the car and I finally had enough of her telling me how I don't love her and how she wants me to love her. Oh, I don't love her how she wants me to love her and how unaffectionate of a man I am. And you know what, dude? That right there is probably how you got this hot girl because you weren't the first guy sitting there with your tongue hanging out of your mouth. You acted like you didn't even give a fuck, which fed into her insecurity of like, oh, my God, is the expiration date hit? Am I not hot anymore? Um... Look at me commenting again. All right, I swear these bitches are so unappreci un unappreciative. <laughs> this is funny you call them bitches. Why can't these bitches understand how much I appreciate their ass? Uh, every weekend, Bill, we do something. Dinner, movies, plays, etc. But because she has a vag, she has to find something to complain about. I think it's because women have this trait where they feel a strong need to be miserable. No, dude, you know what's going on? Is you're spoiling her. You're taking her to dinner, movies, plays every fucking weekend. She, now she's come to expect it. You know what I mean? It's just become part of a routine. It's not special anymore. So now you have to do something extra special because special isn't special. You know? That's what I, I you know what? Oh, gee, I'm going to have to whisper this shit. We were up in San Francisco, right? I lit up my credit cards this Christmas, all right? My girl had a great fucking Christmas, all right? It's three days later. We're up in fucking San Francisco. She wants to go shopping. I'm like, for what? You didn't get enough, you know? So she knows I'm right. So what does she do? She tells me she wants a goddamn candle, okay? Because it's not expensive, but she'll still feel like she got something. Because I don't know what it is. They always got to They always got to get stuff. There's always got to be some sort of a goodie bag. And you know what? I wouldn't get it for. I wouldn't get it for. I go, you're done. No, I'm not. It's over. My credit cards are still glowing. I'm not getting you shit. And, you know. She's cool as hell. So she just kept laughing because I was being unbelievably rude and I was being really loud. I was just joking around. And uh, but still, that's the thing. And I just kept saying, "I spoil you." I'm, I'm, you know, we're shutting it down for a while. You're not getting anything until Valentine's Day. You know, you want something now? I'll get you a little bag of Fritos. What do you think about that? Maybe something to wash it down with. <laughs> And then what they do is they immediately get mad, and then all you do is you don't take the bait. They want you to get mad so then they can turn it into a fight about something else because they know you're fucking right. All right? So let her be mad. All you got to do, you just got to stay fucking calm. Well, let's see what this guy does. Uh, 
So anyways, he goes, so we are driving along the highway, leaving the mall, and she's still bitching. And finally, I tell her, you know what? If you don't like the way I express my love for you, then step off. Uh, Got to read that quote like a black man. I can't. I'm not even going to try to. Uh, so immediately, I actually read that. I read that like a douchey East Coast white guy. Then fucking step off. Uh, how did you? If you don't like that motherfucker, then step off, bitch. How was that? Was that good? I know it wasn't. Well, then don't ask me to do it. All right, plowing ahead. You know what? I might have, like, a fucking substitute black guy for when black guys write some shit in here so you guys can read it the way you're supposed to say it. Other than that, you're getting fucking a cracker-ass read, and you're going to have to live with it. All right, so immediately after that, I said, after I said that, this bitch starts throwing these accurate and quick-ass Pacquiao combos. She's punching you. Mind you, I'm doing 65 miles per hour down the highway trying not to hit the guardrail while at the same time getting this crazy bitch off me. Luckily, I didn't crash my year-old Mercedes. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. Come on, dude. Do you love this girl, or is she just another accessory? Um, my year-old Mercedes with the Corinthian leather. Uh, I get pulled over. Get pulled over, or God forbid, seriously injure us. I mushed the hell out of her and held her face against the passenger window. Totally acceptable. Totally. Ex the mush is the gentleman move. You can't punch her. You just hold her head up against the glass. You know, so the people on the other side get to see what her face looks in a funhouse mirror. <laughs> in order to decrease her reach while steering the car on the highway and absorbing her manly combos. Got to give it to her. The bitch had a mean right. Um, so if you can picture me driving, I can totally picture this, dude. I've lived this. Um, so you can picture me driving down the highway in a bright red Mercedes. So, okay, not I didn't ever had a Mercedes. It was more in a, a 83 Ford Ranger with black vinyl seats. <laughs> um, swerving like some drunk in and out of lanes, staring with one hand and stiff arming the shit out of my girl as if I'm posing for the Heisman Trophy. After she stopped beating my face in, she had the nerve to say, I hit her and hurt her worse by pressing her face against the glass. Are you fucking kidding me? This bitch almost took both of our lives. Long story short, as soon as I was able to come to a safe and complete stop, I kicked the bitch out and haven't heard from her since. This was three weeks ago. And it's all for the best. That type of girl can never be satisfied, which is something I've learned the hard way over the past three years. But this was the straw that did it. So my question for you is, was I wrong in this situation, and do I owe her an apology? No and no. All right? All you can do is break down your game plan. All right? This is where you fucked up. You took the bait. All right? She kept bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching, trying to make you mad. She was. Tr she got you to do exactly what she wanted you to do. So that gave her an, an excuse to do what she wanted to do, which was fucking flip out and yell. All right? That's what they do. When they know they don't have a fucking leg to stand on and they know they're wrong, what they then try to do, you know, not all of them and not in every situation, but when they're not going to be an adult and just say, you know what, you're right, I'm being fucking crazy right now, I apologize, okay? When they're not going to take that adult route, what they then do is they just push your buttons and they just try to make you mad and they just keep pushing you and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until you then flip out and say something fucking crazy like, well, if you don't like it, then why don't you get the fuck out? And then they flip out, all right? So what you got to do is in the future is you, you just don't take the bait. You got to recognize, you know, they're doing, they're doing the fucking Dennis Rodman thing to you. They're baiting you into a penalty. That's all they're doing, okay? And the ref always sees the retaliation. That's basically, it's the same fucking thing. So in the future, just don't get mad. It will drive them up the fucking wall, and you won't believe the amount of arguments you're going to start winning. Because in their effort to piss you off, they're going to cross like 10 other lines, all right? Now, when they cross 10 other lines, if you take the bait and then go even further down the road, that's all that's remembered in the end. As you then try and piece together who said what, when. But if they, go, if they cross 10 lines and you don't take the bait, they are 10 lines beyond where the fuck they should be. And you got them dead to rights. And you just have to maintain your fucking cool. Now, getting back to this other shit is you do not owe her a fucking apology. All right? It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely childish. And you can't, as an adult, expect somebody 
to not hit you if you're hitting them. All right? She's basically asking you to extend a common human-to-human -human courtesy that she's not extending to you. So she can go fuck herself. You definitely... I don't know if you made the right move. Now, I don't know if you walk around calling her a bitch and that type of thing. This is you just trying to be a tough guy. Going, then this bitch said this and this, you know, this bitch said that. Uh, that's another thing. Don't go around calling them bitches because that, that, that just kills your argument. Don't ever call them bad names, all right? Just hold your ground. Don't lose your fucking cool. And let them go through their whole little fucking histrionics trying to get you to take the fucking bait. All right? And as long as in the relationship you admit when you're wrong and you sincerely apologize, they don't have a fucking leg to stand on when you're right. And you're going to start winning arguments and you're going to be happier. There you go. All right? And other than that, I don't know. Stop dating psychos. Bill, wife left. Bill, so I got a text from my wife a couple weeks ago saying she had taken our dog and her things left and we're getting a divorce. Wow. She gave you a text message, you know. That's kind of the way to do it. In a selfish way. You know. <laughs> do you know I know somebody who did that? I knew somebody who was in a fucking relationship forever. And I guess they just didn't know how to get out of it. So here's an option for people out there, men and women. And sir, this has nothing to do with you. This just reminded me of this. So this fucking guy... His, uh, his woman went on a cruise or went on some sort of wine tasting thing or whatever. And he, are, he, I guess he knew that she was going on this trip. So before she left, he already found another apartment, signed a lease and all that type of shit. So she leaves. I mean, she was leaving for like two, three days. He had another buddy of mine went over there, they packed up all his shit and fucking moved it out to this new place. And then, you know, he just lived in that place until the day she was coming back. He came back to the apartment. She comes home and immediately sees half the shit is gone. And he just dropped the bomb like that and said, listen, you know, we need to talk. I'm not fucking happy. <laughs> and when I tell you this fucking woman flipped the fuck out, flipped the fuck out, like went absolutely fucking ballistic. And <clears throat> and I, I always wanted to ask her why. What was it that made you flip out? To, would you would you have flipped out less? Because she she didn't even go into the, the surprise of what, oh, my God, crying, but went immediately to anger. And I think it was because he was already out. And there wasn't going to be any sort of closure slash I can torture you and be a total cunt to you. Like he sidestepped all of that and just made this clean ass fucking break, you know, Dennis Miller, that's the news, and I am out of here. <laughs> that's what I thought when he did it, and I don't know why I always smile when I think, because that's the thing, you know, if you're going to break up with a woman, you just know, I mean, I mean, I never had to break up with a girl I was living with. I can't imagine that fucking hell, and this person, I mean, that that's one way to do it. Um, so if you are stuck in a relationship and you don't know how to fucking bring it up, you just don't know how to do it. That's one way to do it. Because when they come home and you're sitting there, but you, all your shit isn't there, uh, that's that's the conversation has begun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyways. So, getting back to this poor bastard. He goes, her rationale was that she always hated me. Oh, my God. Forget the eight instances of cheating, three post-marriages that I... Three post-marriage that I tolerated just because is as good of a reason for her to leave as any. Wait a minute. Back up here. Wait a minute, dude. She cheated on you eight fucking times? Five times before you got married? I mean, dude, what? Come on, man. You didn't see this coming? 
All right, I'm going to save judgment here. Uh, he said, forget about the eight in instances of cheating, three post-marriages that I tolerated. Uh, then he writes in quote, just because is as good of reason for her to leave as any. Um, here's where you pummel me, but she was my mom's, but she was at my mom's bedside with my mom and I when my mom died. Okay, I didn't realize... Dude, you didn't write this well. I didn't realize to her that nothing... I didn't realize to her that was nothing but her way in. I didn't realize that to her... I, I, I don't know. He's, what, that she went to that, that that was her way into your life? In my grief, I didn't notice she went full Andy Dufresne, just chipping away at my sense of self so she would fuck around. So when she would fuck around, I thought, well, no person in the world will hang on to me, so this is better than being alone. Fuck it. Oh, dude, come on, man. She and I have been together for nine years, married three. My problem is that as a 26-year-old, birthday was yesterday, none of my friends can relate, and my thousand-yard stare oh, can relate. And my thousand-yard stare at the bar just seems to be harsh. Seems to harsh their hipster PBR buzz. Dude, this is the most difficult fucking thing I've ever tried to read. Um, dude, you're only 26 years old. Get the fuck out of this thing. Go to the gym. Is that your problem? Huh? You got a little dough around the fucking middle? That's it, dude. Read up on nutrition. Get, get some fucking self-esteem, man. This is ridiculous. This fucking cunt, you know why she hated you? She's probably, one of the reasons she hates you is because you're not sticking up for yourself. This fucking, oh, dude, I, I, you know what? I'm not going to yell at you. You've already been through the fucking ringer with this one. I'm sorry you ran into something like this. I'm sorry, I don't know who the fuck your, your male role model was when you were growing up. Didn't build you up more, but they obviously didn't fucking raise you right, and now you got to do it, okay? you got to build yourself up, man. You can't fucking, you can't fucking have something like this going on. You're like William H. Macy and fucking uh, Boogie Nights. You're going to eventually fucking shoot her in the driveway, fucking your friend, and then go blow your own brains out. You don't want to be that guy. Fuck this woman. He goes, I've tried to get back out there with some people I know, but when they tried, when they tell their stories from college, all I think is, I wonder if John McCain gets this mad when people his age tell stories about Woodstock. All right, now where do we make the leap there? What, they're pussy stories? And you're pissed because you missed out on that? Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic as, for the most part, my life is much better. My friends think I'm exaggerating because they saw us together, and my response is that people saw Elizabeth Smart out in public too, and she wasn't, and she wasn't fine either. What the hell do I do? The last time I was single, texting didn't exist. I couldn't drink legally. I lived with my parents. I lived with my parents. Uh, you got the point three examples ago, but I keep typing. Uh, I thought maybe as a comic, when you started going on the road and didn't know people everywhere, it may have been a similar vibe. Yeah, dude, like you're you're starting from ground zero. You're totally beat down. You're 26 years old talking about like you're 50. You know? You're fine. All right? Oh, wait, so you went there for fucking, what did you say, eight or nine years? Let's do the math here. Text my wife, blah, 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 blah. Eight instances. Oh, so you were there for nine years. So you got together with this girl when you were 17. So you were, still, you were a baby. All right, I get it, I get it. And you stayed with this girl and you never cheated on her. She cheated on you. And all those years of college when you should have got your game together, how to talk to women, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, dude, that's, you, you, can, you can make up ground real quickly here. You're only 26 years old. Um, you just got to... You just got to get yourself out there. Now, I mean, I wouldn't suggest just going out to bars. Look, if you want to fuck a woman, go out to a bar. Do that. If you want to meet somebody nice, then I, I would I would be, I would definitely look elsewhere. Uh, do you have any hobbies? Do you like sports? I would join some sort of uh, fucking, I don't know what the fuck is the word. What's the word when they let guys and women play together? You know, I joined some shit like that. Take a fucking cooking class. It's just something, you know, 
something where the, where the good girls go to, you know? But, you know, if you just want to go out and get laid, who gives a fuck? You, what you got to do is you got to get over being getting rejected. Just go out to a bar and just talk some shit, you know? Don't go out and get plastered and use that as your fucking courage. Just go out there and just talk some shit, you know? And just go out there and just say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what's up to ten different women tonight. All right? Or if that's too overwhelming, make it five or four. All right? No, no less than four. All right? All right? With no, no pressure on the results. And just go out there and just fucking strike up a conversation. See how long you can keep it going. And, and just, you know, whatever. You're going to be nervous. You're going to give a fuck. But with each one, you're going to give a shit less. And the less you give a fuck, the more relaxed you're going to be, the funnier you're going to be, the more you're going to attract them. It's, it's literally when you give a fuck. When you give a fuck, you're scaring them away. When you care, <laughs> you know, you'll be fine, all right? But it's, you, you got to grow up and stop embracing this fucking, uh, this depressive shit because it's also going to make you an angry cunt. And you're going to fucking hate women and you're going to push your friends away and you end up being alone, all right? Unfortunately... You fucking, you wasted nine years of your life with some cunt. And you got fucking married, okay? But it wasn't a waste because now you know what you don't want. All right? So that's it. But for the love of God, do not get into another goddamn relationship. You got to make a pact with yourself. You're not going to go from a nine-year one, three-year marriage to fucking jumping into something else. You got to stay single and figure out what the fuck you want. You might not want it. You might want to, like, not even go out to fucking bars for a while. You know, let's go to the gym, hit it like a fucking madman, you know, and fucking figure out what you, what you're looking for and then where it should be and then go in that direction. Do that. All right. Not everybody's going to be the guy who goes out and bags a fucking hundred women. Who gives a fuck? All right. At the end of it, if you find fucking love and you find the person you're supposed to be with, you what? Okay. So, uh, whatever. There's my fucking two cents. Did I say the F word enough? All right, Dutch girlfriend turns out to be a hooker. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad for you, but I don't feel bad for you. Provided you didn't get an STD <clears throat> and you didn't knock her up. Oh, Jesus. All right. Let's put on some latex and wade into this one, everybody. Dear Bill, I live in the Netherlands. Um, I've been casually seeing this girl for a few months. Her family is rich, she's a pro fashion model, and looks like Bridget Bardot. I've heard that name, but I can't picture the face, but with a name like that, right? She's got to be all stuck up huh? with her fucking perfect jeans. Anyways, yesterday she told me that for the past few months she's been working as a whore. How fucked up am I that I actually find that sexy on some level? Um, high class on account of her looks and profession. 2,000 euros for three hours, 10,000 euros for 24 hours. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Some guy slobbered all over you for 10,000 hours. How quickly did you have to break up with this girl? I shouldn't make fun of this. This is terrible. Why, why is she tapping out? She's taking the easy way out here. You're already a model. Everybody's rich. Is she getting written out of the will? She's freaking out. Like, what do I do? I've been rich my whole life. No, I'm not going to be. Oh, I'll suck it. Uh, well, why don't I read when I continue reading here? The usual clientele is rich corporate assholes and idiots who save up and think paying ludicrous amounts of money will get them a better orgasm. I have absolutely no interest in seeing this girl anymore. She's not going to be the mother of my children. Yeah, no, she's not. Um, yet she's only told four other people. If I split after her telling me this secret, she'll feel like a piece of trash and view me like some Puritan asswipe. My real reason for running away is you can't ask her to quit, and if she does, she'll only resent you for it and be at risk of relapsing any time. I got to get out. How do I do it? Well, well, what you have to do is stop being concerned about her feelings. What about your feelings? What about the fact that this woman is fucking around on you? What about the fact that she could give you an STD? What about the fact that, she, that a relationship is built on trust and she has this giant fucking secret? arguably the biggest fucking secret you could have. You know? I'm not judging anybody in this fucking story. Because I've been you and I've been the whore. <laughs> I'm just saying. If I'm the whore, 
I ex I accept to get I expect it to get fucking dumped. You know, there's plenty of man ores out there. You know, that's what happens. Um, yeah, dude. No, you gotta stop thinking about it. like it's weird. Like this is what you have to do. You you have to get over the. F um, you have to be selfish in a fucking relationship to end up getting what you want in life. All right, and you have to have parameters, and you know to use the cliche. You know to make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. That's basically what you gotta do. And this is not your fault. Um, I don't know what happened to her that made her choose this horrific fucking profession, but it's not your fault and it's not your job to fix it. And um, you said it in your last two sentences, I got to get out. How do I do it? Uh, so I guess your second to last sentence, you said it, I got to get out. So you just have, you don't have to be mean about it. You just have to say, listen, that's just a uh, unbelievable <laughs> piece of information you just gave me that you were keeping from me. And, uh, Oh, Jesus Christ, you just got you got to use the, the cliche, you know, relationships built on trust. You know, I'm not judging you. Uh, I wish you weren't. I mean, you know what? There's a part of her that might want is probably I don't even tell you this because you might run to this because it's easier. But like, you know, I don't know. This is what I would do. I would break up with her and then also try to get her help to get her out of it. That's what I would do. And by getting her help, I would give her information where she can go. She needs to handle this on her own because you have feelings for her and you know that this isn't the mother of your kids. And if you just keep hanging around with her, you're going to get sucked back into it again. And now you have to trust somebody who lied to you at that fucking level. And um, that is just a, a fucking train wreck waiting to happen. All right, dude, I would go get myself tested for everything on the, under the fucking sun. And um, that's it. That's it. And she, if she cries, I mean, that's part of it. And she brought it on herself. It's not your fault. All right? And I'm not trying to be mean or whatever. I mean, I don't know what happened to her that made her do that type of shit, but that's not your fault. Okay? So why don't you go out there, find a great girl who isn't a whore on the side, and go live your dreams. All right? And you know what? You're going to dump her, and it's going to hurt for a little while. Even though you knew it was the right thing to do, it's still supposed to hurt because you're a human being. You just got to push through that. Go to the gym. Right? Have a couple of belts at the bar, but just stay in it. Stay in that pain, and you wait till that pain's gone, and then you fucking go out and try to find somebody else. In the meantime, you rub one out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, advice. Bill, since you've, uh, you've given great advice on relationships in the past, I'm wondering if you can do it for me. I've been with this girl, this lady of mine, for years, and we're planning on getting married. Oh, Jesus. Uh, we're both only 20 years old. I'm a college dropout since I'm certainly a more blue-collar individual. She is going to college to work with children. We both work full-time jobs, mine being the night shift in a warehouse selecting orders to go to individual stores, stressful and physically challenging. Uh, here's being, hers being a phone-answering day job from 8 to 5, working with customers in a graphic design shop, boring and easy. Okay. He's to find his job is stressful and physically challenging, and her job is boring and easy. Never underestimate how tedious a boring job can be. I'd rather do your job, walking around breaking balls. Look at his fucking shirt, dude. Fucking queer. Drive by on the fucking forklift, right? You guys start a softball league. You have a great time. Rather than sitting there having your ass fall asleep in a cubicle, listening to people bitch because they can't figure out how to work their set it and forget it. Grass is always greener, my friend. Why don't I shut my fucking pie hole and read the rest of this? All right. Since we started dating, she seemed to do everything to keep me interested. Uh, make me breakfast in the mornings on some, on some days, go to concerts with me when she didn't necessarily like the music. Um, the whole works. But I've noticed that she without, she's without question just been lacking in the care department. She just sits and watches TV every night and eats and complains about gaining weight. I come home in the morning to do dirty dishes, to do the dirty dishes that piled up in the sink from her having friends over while I'm at work for the night and get yelled at for not cleaning them when I saw them sitting there, but I had no part in making them dirty. Dude, what the fuck? You can't have that. She leaves clothes laying around every room in the house, and that's not even how uh, she is with me. She has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she... Where everything that she... Yeah, dude, you, I, I really got to proofread these people. So many spelling mistakes. She has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she s says throughout the day should be my main concern, and I should go out of my way to make her life easier. 
I do her college homework. I take care of the $2,000 dog I bought for her. I work on her car when, when she nearly runs the damn wheels off the thing. And I do chores for her family she volunteers me for. Dude, she has your balls in a little, that you know that little engagement ring you bought her? If you bought her yet, yeah, your balls are in there too. The next part is the icing on the cake. She goes as far as to dictate what time I have to go to bed and wake up in the morning. Um, e uh, evening since I work at nights. Uh, what, what I can and can't spend money on, who I can hang out with, what days I can see friends and require me to call her every time I arrive at work and text her in the middle of the night when I get off work and request her, and I request her to do nothing outside of what she does on her day-to-day -day routine. To sum all that up, I feel like she's forcing me into a cookie mold guy when I actually let her make her own decisions, like some strange thing called an adult. All right, I'm going to stop right here, dude, because this is just going to be more fucking misery. All right. This is, this is what I, I've said this before on the podcast. You have to, I don't give a fuck how good the woman is that you're with. You really have to be careful because all this shit you see on TV where women are just constantly, there's all this fucking information out there about how guys are assholes to women. There's just reams of it. And there needs to be because guys are assholes to women. So women, I think, are more aware or at least they should be more aware because they got all these fucking goddamn shows with either from one to four twats sitting around bitching about guys and all the shit that we do. But there's no show on TV where you have four guys just sitting around a coffee table, you know, drinking some hot cocoa with some pillows and wearing sweaters and their favorite shoes, talking about, you know, not losing yourself in a relationship. That's what you've done here. All this shit that she's doing is your fault. Okay, and what's great about being a guy is you can blame the victim, which is why we're better problem solvers, all right? This is your fault. This is all on you. You don't like any of this shit. You have to sit down and talk to her, okay? You, you, you're not required to call her. You can go to bed when you fucking want to go to bed, and you can just sit there and tell her, you did those dishes, you clean it up, okay? Now, here's the point. This is the key with broads. This is what you got to do. You can't be mean. There's no reason to be mean here. There's no reason to yell. There's no reason to be angry. Okay? All three of those things is what she wants you to do. Because the, cause she know, she's going to know she's fucking wrong. If you, if, you, if you made the dishes dirty and every day you're telling me to clean them up, you treat me like I'm fucking Alice on the goddamn Brady Bunch. Everybody knows that that's fucking wrong. So what women do when they're fucking wrong is they try to make the argument about something else. All right? So she's going to do that anyways. So, but you're going to make it easy if you're angry and you yell at her and you call her fucking names. So what you got to do is you got you to keep, keep your fucking cool. That's what you got to do. Keep your fucking cool and say, listen, I worked all night. I don't think it's fair that you tell me to come home and I have to do these dishes when you made these dishes dirty yourself. I don't think it's fair to me to come home in the morning and have a sink full of dirty dishes that not only you, you and your friends made dirty. That's unacceptable to me that you want me to wash those. That's unacceptable. I'm not doing it. You have to wash those. I'll wash my dirty dishes. I'm not doing that. All right? And then, then let her flip out. Let her pout. Let her slam the fucking cabinets. Let her not fuck you. Just don't back down. Rub one out. Who gives a fuck? It's just an urge. You've already banged her. You're not missing anything. Who gives a fuck? But don't get angry. All right? And then just do, do to her what she did to you. Just, just reclaim that territory. You're not doing that. You're not doing that anymore. All right? Start with the fucking dishes. And then start with this. I not, and, you know, you can actually tag that argument. And just say, now that we're on this topic of discussing things, I'm going to go to bed when I want to go to bed. I just, it makes me feel like a child when you're telling me when to go to bed. I know when to go to bed. All right? Now that I've aired two complaints, how about you give me a couple of, you got anything you want to say to me? And just stay cool. Then when she hits you with some shit, if you don't like it, tell her, you know, I was going to say to go fuck herself to, you know, I don't know, what, whatever. You know what? Fuck that last advice. Just go with the dishes thing first. It's unacceptable. That's it. If you bring up something else, then, you, then it looks like you have all this resentful shit, and then she'll try and spin it like, well, if you're feeling all this, why don't you fucking say anything? Because you're a cunt. That's what's going to happen, and then you're going to lose the argument, and the next thing you know, to make up for it, you're not going to be getting any pussy from her, and you're going to be doing a whole sink full of fucking dishes that you didn't dirty. All right. Moving on. But, sir, you have all the power there. Just keep your fucking cool. Um, friends on Holy Wedding. Oh, dude, I was doing so great on this fucking podcast. I don't know. It's somewhere I lost the fucking momentum. I lost my mojo when I was talking about why I laugh, you know, at people with 
the fucking crutches falling down a flight of stairs. I don't know why I got into that. Uh, friends unholy wedding. Bill, I got a problem that I don't think I can go, go to my friends with. A friend of mine is getting married. I've been good friends with the guy since we were five years old. And we are now 23. He's getting married about a year from now. He has selected me to be the groomsman. All right, I'm guessing either you fucked his wife, future wife, or she's banged, you know, 70 people or is fucking around on him. That's what I'm guessing. Um, or she's into the devil. One or the other. This has to be why this is an unholy wedding. All right. He's getting married about a year from now. Good. You got time. He, he is uh, selected. Sorry. Nia just was calling in. She's going to kill me. She's calling from another fucking country, and I just shut it off because I, I got to finish this fucking podcast. <laughs> You're putting the podcast ahead of me? Yes. Um, he's getting married about a year from now. He has selected me to be a groomsman. This means I have to, to pay for a flight to attend the wedding. Furthermore, his bachelor party is being, you cheap motherfucker. This is what it's going to be about money? All right. This means I fucking hate. Oh, hang on a second. The lovely Nia, everybody. Nia. Hi, I'm hey, listen, I'm doing the podcast. Can I call you right back? Okay. Say hello to the podcast listeners. Ali ho I'll talk to you later. Bye. See that? She had a fucking hard day, and I'm not there for her. What a piece of shit. All right, let's get back to Tightwad here. And I have to buy a tuxedo, you know, uh, or rent one. Uh, this means I have to pay for a flight to attend the wedding. Furthermore, his bachelor party is being held in Las Vegas, and I would also have to pay for this flight as well as other expenses of a bachelor party. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue. I'm a college student, and saving the approximately $1,000 this would cost would be, st uh, would be stressful, but it would be worth it to see one of my greatest friends get married. Okay, so you're not a cheap fuck. You're just having money problems. However, my friend has often lied to and cheated on his fiance. Oh! I didn't see that one coming. Why didn't I guess that? There you go. There's a whole new fucking... Jesus. Uh, I'm not judging him. I, dis I disapprove of how he treats her. This guy's actually a good shit, and I actually called him a piece of... Whatever. I judge you on your first couple of sentences. What are you going to do? He goes, I disapprove of how he treats her, but I don't get myself involved. He sleeps around and hides from her the fact that he smokes pot and drinks heavily on a daily basis. I don't know how she hasn't noticed. She's pr probably because she's a sweetheart. Sweethearts always end up with fucking dicks like this. She's never smoked or cheated, uh, as far as you know. I don't understand why he doesn't find a different relationship, but again, I don't get myself involved. The problem is I can't imagine this marriage will last very long, and I don't want to pay $1,000 for a sham marriage at a time when $1,000 is like the lottery to me. I'm actually offended that he's asked me to do all of this for the wedding and thus spend all this money. I cannot imagine asking any of my friends to throw away that much money on something I didn't give a fuck about. Should I decline to attend the wedding, any advice would be appreciated. Uh, I don't know if I can go to our other friends with this one. Um... <clears throat> All right, there's, as always, there's a million different ways you can play this. There's two options, three options. All right, one, you just fucking bite your tongue and you just go to the goddamn wedding and think that, all right, even though it's going to fucking blow up, maybe he'll learn something from it, and then, uh, you know, by the time he's 30, he'll grow up and you guys can actually be friends again. Two, you fucking, did I say there was three? I already forgot the other one. So we, there's only going to be two here. <laughs> oh, I am the, why do you guys listen to this? You know, you know why? Because it makes you feel better, doesn't it? It should. Good. I, I feel like I'm serving a purpose now. Um, just sit the guy down and be like, dude, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, what's up? What the fuck are you doing? Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? What am I doing? I mean, what the, why are you getting married? Because I love her. Where is this going? Dude, you're fucking everything that moves. I walk slower when I'm around you. That's how much shit that you're fucking. Do you understand me? Do you understand where I'm coming from? And you're asking me to go out. She doesn't know your booze. She doesn't know that you smoke weed. You know, I, this is a thousand bucks. If you actually, you know, this is like me flying 
to go see the fucking, uh, I don't know, go see the Padres versus the fucking Colorado Rockies. What is the fucking point? You know? You're, you're, you're a piece of shit. This marriage isn't going to last. And what's worse is you're doing it in front of me, and then I, I got to sit there and have a conversation. You know, I got to figure out what part of her face I'm going to look at because I can't look at her in the eye. You're dragging me into it. Ah, Jesus, this is bad advice. I mean, you got to at least don't say it that way. Just be like, listen, I don't have $1,000. I just don't have it to go to the marriage and then it, you know, to go to the wedding. Start with that, and then if he gives you shit, just say, oh, that's your other option. Just say, listen, I just don't have the money. And you bite your tongue, and you look the other way so you don't see them, the train wreck that's going to happen. That's the option. Or you can just come clean and just say, listen, dude, I love you to death. You're my buddy, but what you're doing here, this is wrong. <clears throat> All right? You're not being fair to her. You're not being fair to me. And yeah, you're fucking, you're screwing yourself in the long run. So this is what you want to do. Go do it, but I don't want to be a part of it. All right? Yeah. So my guess is uh, your best fucking option as far as like the least amount of drama is to, uh, and mental trauma for yourself is to do the one I threw there in the middle, where you just say, listen, I just don't have the money. Dude, I can't believe I'm supposed to be your bro, bro. It's my wedding, dude. I can't believe, dude, I can't believe you're fucking everything that moves and you fucking smoke weed and you booze every day and this girl doesn't even know. How about that? And you're acting like you're not doing it even if it's fucking me and you expect me to stand there. You understand that? You understand that I realize that you're fucking everything that moves right now and you're going to go marry this girl? And I'm going to have to sit there and watch you toast this girl. I love you. You're the, uh, the, the blood that pumps through my heart. That bullshit. I got to sit there staring at my fucking lasagna. You know there's going to be lasagna. Anytime you got to cook for more than fucking ten people, they just make a big tray of that shit. We have a meat base. We have a vegetarian. Is that big fucking silver tray? 